Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve and this is Maple and Honey. Over the last couple of years, or I say 5-10 years actually, the popularity of bourbons have gone up crazy. It just skyrocketed out of nowhere, right? Along with the rise in popularity, I think there are a bunch of myths or misperceptions that came about that I would like to sort of address today. I came up with five myths that will be myth busting and I'll sort of go over it with you one by one. I popped some popcorn downstairs, um, it's still hot so hopefully it's cooled down a little bit. And I have a bottle of Russell's Reserve Private Barrel Selection Single Barrel here that I'm going to enjoy with a block of ice. Before I get into the first myth, cheers everybody, thanks for joining. Mmm, delicious. The first myth on the list is, this is a good one, older bourbon is better. This is, it can't be further from the truth. Now it's true, the older bourbons, it could be rare. These distilleries, you know, they have these bourbons in barrels and they have to, in order for them to generate revenue, they have to pump out these bourbons every so often. They can't hold on to all their barrels for 20, 30 years or they will never make money, right? So it, they do get rarer. Um, as the, the years go by. But just because it's in the oak barrels for a longer period of time, it does not automatically mean that it's better. You know, it's, sure, if the bourbon is in the oak barrels for a longer time, it is more oakier, it has more, it's, has more time to absorb that oakiness, right? All those years of chemical reactions inside the barrels, sure, it brings out all the characteristics of that barrel into the whiskeys, that is true. But other than that, it doesn't necessarily mean that the older barrels are better by any means. A lot of the flavor in the bourbon, it comes from the distilling process, like, you know, what grain is in, right? What's the, what's the percentage or what's the combination of grains that are, that's in there? Is there more rye in there? Is there more corn? You know, how is it stored? Is it stored in a warehouse? It's cold? Is it hot? Is there a big change in temperature, right? How's the humidity? right? It, what's the distillation, uh, distillation process? All that stuff sort of factors into making a specific profile in a bourbon. So that's, that sort of is more determinant of how good a bourbon is. The length of how long the whiskey stays in the barrel, it has minimal impact in my opinion on the, how good the whiskey is, how good the bourbon is. Again, because it's in the oak barrels for a long time, it will have more oaky flavor, have more woody flavor. It might even be more, more concentrated and the color will be different. But otherwise, to, to just blanketly say that it's a better bourbon because it's 15 year old, 20 year old, 25 year old, that is completely false. So that's number one. Let's go for a second sip. Let's wet my palate a little bit. All right, number two. By the way, this is delicious. If you haven't tried the Russell's Reserve Single Barrel, one of the best bang for the money. So good, so good. Number two, I hear this one a lot. This one is a good one. Only way to drink whiskey or bourbons is neat. Only way to drink it is just straight from the bottle without any ice or water or mixed with anything else. That is complete baloney in my opinion. Okay, there's only, there's no rule, there's no, you know, law against, you know, drinking uh, a whiskey or a bourbon or something. There's absolutely no rule. There's the only sort of rule that I could see that is valid is that you drink it the way you like to drink it. I mean, for me, I like to drink it with the block of ice a lot of times. For me, I like higher proofs, but that doesn't mean I don't like um, these whiskeys with a little bit of ice in there. It brings out so much the different flavors once the ice goes in there bring, brings out the fruity flavors brings out extra sweetness it sort of tones down the alcohol so it could taste more of what it has to offer it's delicious i love it a lot of times i hear this myth from those folks who have uh, been drinking whiskey for a while like oh you have to drink it in a neat uh you know glencairn there's some truth to that if you drink it neat in a glencairn sure you get them a little bit more uh, a scent out of it because the glencairn glass is sort of funneling the, the scent up. And sure, if you drink and neat, you get the full impact of everything that is in there uh, on your palate. But sometimes, that whatever it is, the alcohol or, or you know, oakiness, it sort of masks 
lot of the flavor that's already embedded in the whiskey. And by putting just a couple drops of water, by mixing with the ice, it brings all that, that floral, that fruitiness, that breadiness, it brings it all out. It brings it all out and lets you experience a lot more than, than you could just experience from, you know, neat, straight out of glass, you know, especially for those high proof ones. So, you know, don't, don't let other people tell you, oh, this is the only way to drink it or that's, you know, you don't know how to drink whiskey. That's baloney, guys. That's absolute baloney. So if you haven't tried it out with a little bit of water, hesitant to put some ice in there, try it out, explore. That's the whole point of enjoying or you know going into this whole bourbon scene or bourbon experience. You just try out whatever that fits you, that's your palate and, and just uh, go for it. Don't let other people sway you into doing the way they want you to drink. That's, that's complete bogus, so cheers. Number three, this one's sort of obvious. One is sort of obvious for a lot of people who are already drinking whiskey or bourbon, but I still want to address it. Whiskey, same as bourbon. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it could sort of use it interchangeably at times, but whiskey, all whiskey is not bourbon, but all bourbon is whiskey. So if you want to think about it, think of whiskey as sort of like the big umbrella and under it has all of these prongs of bourbons, single malt, Canadian whiskey, Tennessee whiskey, Japanese whiskey, all different sort of sub uh, categories of whiskey under this huge umbrella of whiskey. So just think of it like that. Again, all bourbons are whiskey, considered whiskey, but not all whiskeys are considered bourbon. So I got this question a lot. That was different, it's not the same thing anyway. It's not, I mean, it's more of a technicality, but still there's a little bit of difference. So. That's number three. All right, moving on to number four. This one bothered, this one frustrates me, but I've heard people say, hey, all bourbons taste the same. All bourbons about the same. What's the difference? That is further from the truth than I could ever imagine. Not all bourbons taste the same. Sure, they have similar qualities like vanilla, like caramel, like the oakiness, they have a lot of it sort of share that baseline profile. I get that and I agree with that. And they have the same, about the same color, right? I mean, they're all brownish, yellowish color. So I get that. But to say that they all taste the same, that's absolutely untrue. You know, there's uh, on top of the vanilla or caramel or oakiness, even within that realm of baseline flavor, there's different intensities. Uh, different in every almost every bourbon right some of them are sweeter some of them are oakier some of them are more caramelly right and that's just that there's there's fruity notes right in bourbons there's floral notes there's um, more like smoky notes uh, some people really love the smoke in bourbons um, you know there's super sweet bourbons whereas there's um, not as sweet bourbon there's so many different kinds of bourbons out there that, that you could enjoy. Not all bourbons taste, there's no way that all bourbons taste the same. Some bourbons taste similar, but no way, no way. This one is completely untrue. Not all, bourbons do not taste the same across the board. You know, especially these days, distillers are trying, in my opinion, from what I see, distillers are trying, like desperately try to invent or experiment with new ways of making whiskey or bourbons specifically, right? Like different kind of barrels, uh, different, you know, ways of distilling it, how many times you barrel it, you know, all kinds of stuff, mixing different kind of grains in there. It's all different. And by doing that, you know, they come, they come up with these different flavor profile whiskeys that are very, not very distinct, but there's differences in, in, in these new whiskeys or whiskeys that are distilled a little differently. So again, this one, all whiskeys are same, no way. These are not the same. They don't taste the same. Maybe they're similar in a lot of aspects or some aspects, but they're not the same. They don't taste the same. So that's number four. All right, moving on to last one, number five. Let me wet my throat here. Delicious. Number five. 
alligator. This one's this one bothers me too, but it's a real good one. Alligator or expensive whiskeys or bourbons are better than non allocated inexpensive whiskeys. Allocated whiskeys, allocated bourbons are better than non allocated inexpensive bourbon. Baloney, baloney. Don't believe if, if someone automatically says that. That is not true at all. I think this is the biggest myth out of the five if I have to pick one. You know, over the years, I think because the popularity has gone up so much, the some of the whiskeys that were readily available on shelves at the supermarkets or liquor spots or whatever, they've been disappearing and it's harder and harder to get. So for instance, like the like those wellers over there, especially the Weller Green Weller Special Reserve. I mentioned it in another episode, but these bottles, they were available on shelves just collecting dust. Nobody would get them. It was just on top shelf collecting dust, like dozens of them. But now, because everyone's sort of getting into bourbons and whiskeys, you can't find them anywhere. Just because the bottle is rare or just because <clears throat> you can't find the bottle as much as you used to, doesn't mean it's all of a sudden better or it's better than some of the ones whiskey that's on the shelf readily. And that's completely false. Like Blanton is another good example. People love Blantons. Like, you know, they, they, the Blantons right here. People go crazy over this Blantons. Whenever it's out, people just go make a stampede over to the, to the, to the store and just you clear out the shelf within minutes. And right now it's what? $80, $90, $100 retail. You know, once you go on, if you find it online, it's like $150, $200. That's common. Is it that good? Um, better than the sale bottle that's half, half the price? I mean, this one is, this Russell's Reserve single barrel, it's same single barrel, probably around the same age. I mean, this one, it, I'm, uh, let me tell you right now for sure, this one has a lot more flavor than this one. Flavors are more deep and more wide in spectrum. Um, and it's like half the price and it's readily available and it's so good you get more experience out of it more positive experience out of it and it has a you know lesser impact on your wallet as well so it's a win-win just because on that you know you hear that all oh, bourbon this buffalo trace bourbon is you know uh, so allocated so rare it must be better completely untrue completely bogus completely baloney my humble suggestion is ignore uh, those kind of receptions and just go out there and just try out new stuff try out stuff that's on the shelves at liquor stores or supermarkets or whatnot just do a light research on what sort of would fit your profile and then try out different ones that are not just allocated. don't go just ch just chasing just the allocated bottles just the ones that are expensive i mean if you want to show off to other people maybe that's your thing then maybe but but otherwise if you want to have a good bourbon experience if you want to taste something you know, if taste and scent and the experience is what matters more to you, then try out the Russell's single barrel for half the price, then sort of to chase this down for double, triple the price. So there you have it, guys. Thanks so much. That's all I got. Uh, if you get a chance, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment below. Let me know what you think of this episode. Have a good one. I'll catch you on the next one. See you guys.